Hi there, welcome back. My girlfriend and me always wanted to experience the so-called van life. Before buying a van and starting to fix it to our needs, we decided that it would be smart and try if we would like this lifestyle or not. With this in mind, last January, we decided to book a trip for 10 days with a company called Soul Campers in Portugal. If you're new to this channel, my name is Matias, I'm a 26-year-old consultant living in the Netherlands and would really appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to this channel. Our initial idea was to travel to Faro, then drive north up until the Douro Valley, passing through cities like Elvas, Evora, Monsanto, staying at a vineyard in Douro Valley, and then drive to the coast near Aveiro or Ovidos, and down through the coastline through the Alentejo and Algarve, and ending up again in Faro. This would be a tentative trip, and we would adjust it if needed. For the first three days, we stuck to our itinerary. However, later on, as the weather started to change and it started to rain a lot, we decided to adapt and drive immediately to the coast from Monsanto, skipping the north of the country and then down south. It was really nice experience, nice moments together that we will never forget. Being our first time traveling on a camper taught us some lessons. The first lesson and probably the most shocking to us was the amount of water that we'd spend on our day to day. We knew we would not have the means to have a warm shower every day or even we would have to adapt to do the dishes differently as if we're used to back home. However, we never thought that even though we adapted to this new lifestyle, we would end up spending so much water. The van had a tank of around 60 liters, which we ended up refilling almost every second to third day, even though we would just use it for necessary things like washing dishes, cooking, and from time to time cleaning ourselves with a cold shower. So we downloaded this app called Park for Night, where you can find amazing locations for staying the night, parking during the day, or also even cleaning your water or empty your grain tank or getting a refill of water. And while using this app, we ended up in amazing locations with amazing views but also places where the police will kick us out. While being there, of course, you need to do your body, let's call it. And sometimes we would end up, you will find yourself in the middle of nowhere, needing to use the toilet, and you would resort to nature, right? <laughs> it was shocking. The thing that struck us, struck us the most is there was a lot of paper around from people that didn't, that clean after themselves and didn't clean after themselves, let's say, so they would leave the papers there. And it was always certain type of people, apparently, that would do it, and certain type of people that didn't care for the environment, and ended up throwing papers in the ground and not cleaning it. Apparently, this got worse during the pandemic, where a lot of people decided to try the so-called van life and work remotely from places, like Portugal. And before 2020, it was allowed to wild camp and spend the night anywhere. In 2020, given the sharp increase of pollution and other factors, the government decided that it would be smart to implement a law where you would not be able to wild camp everywhere, only in certain designated areas. These designated areas were actually the camping. And in these spots, yeah, you could sleep. In 2021, once COVID started to slow down, uh, they allowed wall camping, so you could stay the night for 48 hours in certain places except protected areas, which for us would be, for example, the Algarve Coast or Alentejo or mm, national parks. This was totally not allowed in other places you could stay for 48 hours max in the same municipality. Failing to comply would imply a fine of up to 600 euros and at the beginning I didn't understand why they would do something like this, I mean they wanted tourists out or something but after staying there and seeing what tourists did I understood, we understood that the law may actually sense. This leads to the third lesson which is choose your destination wisely. So choose your destination is vital, not only of the places that you would like to see but you should be aware of the rules of parking there and staying overnight, how does it work, you can get fines or not. 
this will help you and your travel to be more easy, let's say. So for example, we didn't know about this law until everything was booked and paid for and then we found out and was like, okay, let's do it anyway. And we'll probably not be while camping again in Portugal just because of this law. However, other countries like Spain, while camping is still available and possible. So we will consider going somewhere there. So thinking of your destination, I think is something wise. This leads to being prepare for the unexpected. While well, while parking, certain things you cannot control. Sometimes you just don't feel comfortable the places are where you're gonna stay. You should always have a plan B. For example, once we got woken up at 1.30 a.m. by the police, then we were not allowed to park there because we didn't know and up until that point we didn't understand the law quite well. And thankfully the police officer was nice and he explained us how it worked and the 48 hours and everything. And this forced us to move to our next location. Luckily we were always with a plan B, okay, if something happens we go somewhere here. We ended up uh, sleeping on the back of a parking lot in a supermarket. We would always be prepared and think of one step ahead, think of a plan B if something happens, if we would get kicked out or we were not feeling safe or someone would try to break in while we were sleeping. So always be prepared for the unexpected. Not being able to shower for a few days definitely makes you step out of your comfort zone. I'm also a city person, not per se nature one, and staying in the middle of nowhere without nothing but a few other campers and an amazing view and barely any signal on my phone would trigger my South American feeling that something bad will happen. I would have to step out of my comfort zone to be together with my girlfriend and do things that I was not really comfortable doing because I had no other option. So in this trip, I learned that I would always have to step out of my comfort zone and just deal with it. That being by having to sleep in a place I was not really comfortable with or having to adapt my trip to unexpected factors like, for example, the weather. Our camper barely had space to walk around for one person, so we would struggle to fit with two. You could reach every item of the camper if you'd stand in the middle. How many times have you thought of booking an all-inclusive resort and thought this would be the last, the best trip ever and just being disappointed when your expectations were not met? With this trip, I learned that does not matter what items you have, how luxurious you travel, how luxurious you live, your state of mind determines everything. What a good trip will be or not. You can go to an all-inclusive, the Hilton, whatever, or go to sleeping on a tent and you could have the same enjoyment if you're in a nice clear set of mind and you can have fun in very different ways so i will show you now on this video a short tour of the camper Last, it's not about the location or the items you own or the items you have and the things you do, but more about the people you do it with. I knew this trip was gonna be memorable from the moment we booked it last January. Experiences can be fun and it's mostly determined by the people you experience them with. For me, it was my girlfriend. So I left with the girlfriend and I came back with my fiance and probably experienced one of the best trips I've ever had in my whole life. And I was lucky enough to travel a lot, I have to say. But I was not because of the locations or the activities that we did. I mean, yes, that helped. But it was more about certain moments and decisions that marked my life moving forward, such as the moment I proposed to my girlfriend and she said yes. So it's not all about the place and location and activities that you do, but more about who you do the things with. Now, as a first time camper van, let's call it, it's the first time on my camper van. I asked myself, will I be ever doing this again? And the answer is yes. Where and when? I don't know. We don't know. But I can guarantee that I recommend this sort of trip for everyone. No matter how you live, you will step out of your comfort zone. You will connect to nature, yourself, and you will test your limits besides waking up every day with an amazing view just like this one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.